Hey, yo. Right, first of all, I'm sorry I didn't get a video up on Friday. I've not been well lately, I won't go into details, but I wasn't up to it, so I decided the best thing to do was just give it a miss. Now, one thing that keeps coming up in the comment section on various videos is the advent of solid state batteries and how they're going to revolutionize electric vehicles. Like a lot of things where electric vehicles are concerned, I think to some extent this new technology has been missold. It's clear that a lot of viewers believe that this is, you know, without a doubt going to replace the internal combustion engine as a viable long range way of traveling with quick charge times and long ranges of up to 700 kilometers between charges. It sounds good, doesn't it? Now, contrary to uh, a lot of what well, a lot of commenters believe in my videos, I'm not an EV hater. There is a place for them if, you know, they fit your lifestyle. They just don't fit mine. What I do have a problem with is that they're basically being forced upon us. We're not given a choice as people as to what form of transport we use. And there's a lot of misrepresentation going on. The pro-EV lobby seems to get away with an awful lot. I mean, you cast your mind back to sort of recent years where certain German manufacturers of internal combustion engine motor cars have been raked over the legal coals for inaccuracies of uh, emissions information. Mark my words, once the honeymoon period is over with EVs, you're going to see something very similar, but on a much larger scale. It seems to me that a lot of myths about electric cars don't come from electric car sceptics. They come from the pro-electric car lobby. They tend to exaggerate the capabilities of these vehicles and downplay or totally ignore the more unsavoury aspects of EVs in order to encourage their uptake which is one of the most disconcerting aspects of evs as far as i'm concerned so what i'm going to try and do is just put some of those myths into perspective just from the little bit of research that i've done because i think that's one of the major problems these perpetuators of myths rely on your public just not checking the background information in debates published here on YouTube, you often hear electric vehicles and ICE vehicles being referred to as VHS and Betamax. Betamax being the petrol or diesel vehicle, of course. Now, I think anybody over the age of 40 will know what that means. Um, you know, back in the early 1980s, when consumer video first became available, there were basically two video cassette formats. There was Betamax and VHS. Now, I actually preferred Betamax. It was smaller, it was more compact, it had very similar run times to VHS, but for some reason, VHS won the day. And I think that had more to do with marketing than, you know, the, the actual superiority of one product over another. Now, ironically, you can compare EVs and ICE vehicles with Betamax and VHS, but not for the reasons you think. You know, ICE vehicles are described as the sort of Betamax because they're inferior. But the reality of VHS winning out over Betamax was that the licenses for third-party companies to adopt the technology for the production of video machines and video cassettes was much cheaper and easier to obtain. Betamax, which I believed was owned by Sony, was comparatively expensive to get the necessary licenses. So, as I say, it was marketing, really, that helped VHS one out. And it's marketing which is helping the EV sort of rise to popularity, aided, of course, by government mandates forcing us to have them. And the other thing, that, of course, that we keep hearing is that EVs are, you know, a fantastic new technology. And, 
you know, petrol and diesel vehicles are old fashioned, they're now obsolete, and they need to be replaced by this new technology. Well, actually, if they bothered to check a few facts themselves, they'd find that they're totally wrong on that one. Because you see, if you bother to do the research, you'll see that the first practical internal combustion engine wasn't invented until 1876 by a man called Nicholas August Otto. And the first EV was invented by a man called Robert Anderson, a Scottish inventor, back in 1837. A long time before the petrol engine. That's not far off 200 years ago. Electric vehicles are almost 200 years old. And the reason they never took off were the same reasons that we're very sceptical of them now. They were very heavy and they had short ranges. They were also very difficult to refuel. In fact, the first examples, which I think were sort of prototypes, one-offs, or perhaps toys built for wealthy individuals couldn't be recharged at all. The batteries had to be replaced or rebuilt after, you know, each journey. I watched a debate on GB News about EVs uh, about a week ago, and I'll leave a link in the video description down below. Jim Dale, a meteorologist and climatologist, a man who, as far as I can tell from the few occasions that I've seen him in action, is very much an advocate of the climate change crisis and understandably is also pro ev recently made a complete fool of himself by claiming that an adversary on this particular debate was a cave dweller because she wanted to cling on to this old outdated ICE technology over the new fangled state-of-the-art EV technology, blissfully ignorant of the fact that he'd completely got his facts wrong. I hope he puts more effort and research into his climate projections than he does his um, knowledge of EVs. Okay, this is only a minor thing, it's a technicality, but this is what colours people's perspectives of what they're up against. It misleads people. In fact, I've lost count in the comments section of various videos how many times a very similar insult or argument has been thrown at me. That I'm frightened of change. I don't want to give up the internal combustion engine because I'm frightened of this new technology. And of course, this raises another question because, again, we're constantly being told that EV technology over the, just the next few years, five, six, seven, eight years, is going to improve exponentially. If you look at the timeline of the EVs, the first true rechargeable EV was introduced into the market, I think it was in America, in 1889. Now, there were several companies sort of building and developing EVs back in the late 1800s, mainly for use as city runabouts or taxis. Now, I've heard one source state that in 1912, EVs were capable of travelling 100 miles on a single charge, although no specific models were named. The closest fact that I've been able to find was that in 1914, now this is a model that was actually introduced in 1907, the Detroit Electric Model 47 could attain 80 miles range from a single charge using old-fashioned lead-acid rechargeable batteries. And here we are in 2027, and the average EV is capable of around about 180 miles to a charge. Or should I say, they have a stated range of around about 180 miles. We know in reality it's substantially less than that. But let's say that's true. Okay, they haven't been mainstream, but EVs have been in development constantly since that time. And it's taken over a hundred years of development, not just with batteries, but with motors, the materials used to produce these cars, 
every ounce of technology that a hundred years of development can throw at them and basically all we've done is double the range which is still less than half the range of an average petrol car well it is with mine anyway yet the public have been brainwashed into thinking that within the next eight years we're suddenly somehow miraculously going to be able to double it or even better I can't see it. Now, this is, of course, where the solid-state batteries come into play. This is what's been thrown at me all the time as the reason for, you know, this, this great sudden revolution in EV technology. Now, the market leader at the moment in the solid-state battery is Toyota, who have just stopped producing all-electric cars. In fact, they're only going to use this technology in hybrid cars. I wonder why. You see, the problem with a battery, with a single cell in a battery, is that it can only store so much electricity in the architecture of a battery cell. It's governed by the laws of physics, and it doesn't matter how good your battery cell is, it can only store and discharge a finite amount of energy. So the only way to produce more range is to add more batteries, more cells. And the more batteries you add to the EV, the heavier it becomes and the more expensive it becomes. So the cheaper cars are only able to you know, provide that lower range because... The manufacturers had to keep the, the number of batteries to a minimum to make it affordable. The higher end, more expensive EVs have a longer range because, quite simply, they're carrying more batteries. But inevitably, you reach a threshold where it's not possible to add more batteries to the vehicle because the whole thing just gets out of control. It becomes too big and it becomes too heavy and it's no longer practical. Now, the common lithium-ion battery that's in use at the moment, it's been around for well over a decade, I think it was originally mobile phone technology, uses a gel, a liquid gel, as the electrolyte. Solid-state battery technology enables the use of a solid instead of a liquid, hence the name solid-state. And the use of that solid means that you can compact the size of your battery it still only produces the same amount of electricity or should i say stores and discharges the same amount of electricity but you're able to make it much smaller so you're able to cram more batteries into you know the same amount of space on an ev so it's not that these solid state batteries are mooted to produce more electricity to give you more range it's simply the fact that they're much smaller, so you can cram more of them into a smaller space and improve range. Now, okay, that's an advantage in itself, but there's a problem connected with that. First of all, the other advantages are that it's less prone to spontaneously combusting, which is good, and the solid in place of a gel electrolyte doesn't suffer degradation as quickly so the battery should last twice as long as the equivalent old technology lithium iron now it's not entirely clear to me by how much these batteries can be miniaturized but looking at some of the diagrams and sort of promotional videos that i've seen it looks to me like they're able to condense these battery packs down to about 25% of a standard lithium iron battery pack. So theoretically, you may be able to put up to four times more batteries or three times more batteries into a given space in an EV. But these packs are certainly going to cost the same amount per pack per battery to produce as the old lithium ion technology i think it's conceivable that certainly initially it's going to be more expensive so that's going to make your ev 
four times more expensive than they are now. And that's why Toyota has decided not to go with dedicated EVs, but instead to, to you know, add this technology to their hybrids. It's not the silver bullet that everyone is led to believe it's going to be. There's a major drawback with it, and that is cost. Now, this is potentially good news for electric motorcycles because, obviously, you've got very limited battery storage space on a bike. So, although they're likely to be far more expensive than the internal combustion engine bike that you're riding around on now, there is the potential to improve the range on bikes at a cost. Now, the last thing that is always mentioned is that, you know, this technology is going to get cheaper as it becomes more mainstream. I don't think it's going to pan out that way, and I'll tell you why. Everything is pointing in the direction that governments, especially the UK government, doesn't want its citizens having their own transport in the future. They want us off the roads. And the cost of these vehicles is going to be, you know, prohibitive in the first few years. These manufacturers will be selling fewer vehicles, so they will have to keep the prices at a premium. Low volume sales equates to higher cost products. That's a simple fact of life. Right, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I hope this video has perhaps enlightened a few people. Uh, you know, we are being steered up the garden path. There's no doubt about it where EVs are concerned. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I will hopefully be back on Friday, so until then, please, ride safely, and I'll see you soon.